In this video, we'll look at creating load cases to help organize the loading applied to our models. So when loading our structure, it's important that we actually define load cases ahead of time. Uh, load cases will help us manage our loads and apply them and look at our results in more concentrated detail. And these load cases can also be combined using load combinations to look at the combined effects of different types of loads. So we're going to continue on with the model we just created. Now that we've finished defining the geometry of our structure, as well as its boundary conditions, we can apply the loading. But we need to create our load cases first, so we have to assume what types of loads to consider. For this example, we'll define a load that represents the self-weight of the beams in the columns, a dead load, and a live load. In order to define these types of load cases, I have to switch from the geometry window where I am right now to the loads window. So I'm going to click on the loads window and it opens up a whole other window with different tools and a slightly different interface. We notice now that we have this drop down list which will contain our future load cases and different tools for defining loads and editing loads. First of all, I need to instruct SRAM to calculate the beam self weight automatically using its own load case. And to do that, I need to create a new load case. So I can click on this new load case button, which is right here, or I can go to edit new load case, and this would only be found under the loads window. So I can go to new load case, and I'm going to create a name for this load case. I'll call it self weight. And I'm going to enter a gravitational factor of negative 1 in the z-axis. And that's really all you need to remember when creating a self-weight load case. The negative 1 in the z-axis is telling S-Frame that sum up the entirety of the member's uh, volume and multiply that by the density of the material that's being used. And we'll be able to calculate the mass of the structure. S-Frame already knows the direction of gravity based on what we put in here. So in this case here, it's in z in the negative z direction, so going down, and it knows the gravitational constant for the unit system I'm using, so I don't need to enter 9.81 or 32.2. And I'll press OK, and now I have one load case shown here, and I don't really need to add anything to this because it's already accounting for the self weight. I can then press the new load case button and define another load case. This one here I'm going to call dead load. And since I've already accounted for the self-weight in a separate load case, I don't need to do it again. If I need to consider the combined effects of self-weight plus the other dead loads, I can do that in a load combination. So I'll press OK. And one more load case, pressing new load case again. I'll go to live load. And once again, I'm not going to enter any gravitational factors. I'll press OK. And now from this drop-down list, I have three different load cases. Currently, though, only one of them has any loads in them, the self-weight load case. And that's because it's accounting for the mass of our beams and columns. I didn't have to assign any loads explicitly through these tools here. 